Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's definitely some homebrew project. I think this is a radio amateur power amplifier system and it consists of a power supply unit and uh, the transmitter amplifier power amplifier here. And uh, yeah, we have uh, definitely, it's maybe in the process of uh, being done, but we don't have any labels whatsoever. What is in, what is out, what is on, what is off, what is, uh, what is, what is, what here? I mean, the only thing that I figure out is this is the on off of the power supply. And um, yeah, I can figure out this is the mains input. And then there is a fantastic connector like that. And look at that, all the different voltages completely exposed to your fingers. So uh, if you power this up without the cable, you could accidentally touch this. I don't have the cable, so I can't really power this up. And it's not really my interest in powering this up. I definitely want to open this and see what is inside. So that is what is going to happen. The back side of both units again. No big reveal of what is going on. Exactly the same connector here. So this, we got some fuses and all that. I think this is to uh, to take the cable and mount the cable so it's not going to fall out. Cases looks a lot like they are reused from some other project. I can't really remember what that was. Probably some Stono radio um, power supplies or something like that. Because you can see the, um, the mains connector and some multi-connector or something like that. And now we're inside. Yep. An absolutely fantastic tube amplifier for radio amateur use oh <laughs> i think we should start looking at the power supply that is definitely a beast of the more nice things it is very very heavy yeah, but i can barely lift it with one hand i think it's difficult to see how big it is really but that transformer here is definitely why it's heavy but there's also another transformer up here this one looks like it's all the auxiliary uh, voltages and uh, over here we have a filter choke for the high voltage i think and the five gray capacitors they are in series with 10k a bleeder resistors and uh, voltage divider resistors and you can even see the high voltage rectifier is made like that okay so it's a bridge with two and two diodes in series and resistors and capacitors over the diodes so that would be the high voltage output from the transformer and they are even using balanced resistors oh look at that they have been really really warm and that will be voltage regulator tubes probably for some of the lower voltages and uh, yeah some more capacitors for all the different voltages i see some rectifier diodes down there and all that this looks like it is really really old oh yeah 1000 micro 200 volts each so times five oh yo yo that can on alive anybody and i mean really the voltage directly from the capacitors without any relays or protection or anything like that it goes straight to that connector here and also i mean can you imagine you could easily touch this right 
Oi, oi, oi. Nasty, nasty. And the capacitors, they are mounted on a plastic base. But the distance to chassis is just too short. I mean, it's barely touching in the left one. And here it's barely touching the transformer down there. And the screws, they go all the way through anyway. I mean, so those screws here. Ah, okay, they actually do go into the plastic, and they don't go through. So there was an idea about the isolation, but it's not meant for all that high voltage. And again, the high voltage rectifier, and he didn't remove all the copper on the back side, just so you can have a little bit of spark over. Hmm. Oh, and again... Nasty corrosion on the fuses, classic problem. More resistors and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's it's not the worst kind of build quality or anything like that, but it's also not the most safe. I would go as far as calling this definitely dangerous. That is what it is. Let's look a little bit on the power amplifier. And well, first of all, you'll see the trimmer capacitor here is a uh, butterfly type. And it's called like that because it consists of two capacitors and they're isolated from each other and you adjust both of them at the same time. So it's a little bit interesting, this um, design. And then we have a very, very cool tube. So this is a dual uh, triode for VHF and you can also see the windings here. See this will be the anode circuit at a little bit higher impedance. We've got two windings and two windings and then we've got one winding here that is the output and then it goes to a little bit of after tuning and that is the stuff you got here and the output is that quarks that goes to the connector there. Here's also a little bit of uh, tuning and there's another one on the other side so you can fine tune the match of all that. DC input to this circuit is in the middle. So that is this wire here. It goes via a resistor and down to the amp meter. So here they uh, measure the voltage drop and that is of course your anode current. This one is not in use anymore for whatever reason and all the fuses and lamps and stuff here is also not in use. So it is a little bit of a uh, work in progress. Also this relay is not in use. As far as I can see we got no wires here. So that was probably just a cool idea. There's another relay down there and there's another relay down there. We should of course flip it around. This will be the input. And the input goes again to a circuit that is a little bit like the same. Again, you have one little winding, the black one for the input. Then you have the two and the two inputs to the two um, cathodes or the two grids. And this way you drive the two half, the two tubes in push-pull mode. And here's the other side of the power amplifier. I think this is a bias adjustment and uh, probably a filament or bias relay. So this is how you TX this thing. And this one is uh, probably some, I don't know, what are we measuring here? I don't know. That one up there, that has to be, is it voltage or current? I don't know what they're doing here. Uh, by the way, those tubes, um, really really nice and all that uh, but the, the the way that the pins goes into the socket makes them extremely easy to crack can you see this problem here this one is cracked so this is probably why this project just went to a shelf and then nothing happened because that tube is broken and I just happen to have within reach, 
directly on my table another one and see here again they crack like that so this is the the problem but they're still really really beautiful tubes so i just have this on my shelf here just because i think it's beautiful i don't dare to throw it out but obviously this one leaked and i bet this one also will be white i have to take it out and have a little inspect so how are we going to take this out of the socket um that is dangerous because they like i say they go a little bit brittle so when you grab them real hard and try to wiggle wiggle you this is how you make the pins break but it's also how you make the glass break and then it more or less explodes in your fingers and this is how you go to the hospital It was actually a lot easier to pull out because this one is bendable and I could just get it easily out. And exactly like I said, oh, sad, sad. I really wanted to have a chip like this. I was about to be done playing with these, but then it um, strikes me the case. I think I've seen this before, I just couldn't really put a name on it. But look at that logo! This is the telephone company logo in the old days, I think, right? So that is where this case is from, some telephone equipment or something like that, right? Well, anyway, I think I'm done playing with these for now. Thank you very much for watching!